Elementary Information Retrieval, Scalable Text Search. A little bit of history on information retrieval. It's a research field that traditionally started out separately from databases, and it goes way back to 1959 when a researcher at IBM named Hans Lund started a system called Keyword in Context that actually invented many of the techniques we'll learn today. It's hard to appreciate how amazing it is that someone in 1950s was thinking about searching text electronically. This was a time when there were no documents online. There was no notion of online. And in fact, very few documents had been encoded in computers. Computer memories were extremely small and were mostly used for calculation. So think about this. It's the person who's thinking ahead, imagining a world in which lots of documents have been unloaded online as full human text and that someone might want to search in them. It's pretty incredible how far he got at that time. In the 60s and 70s, a fellow named Jerry Salton at Cornell did quite a lot of research as well on a system called SMART. And this was around the same time as the relational database was being invented. So these were evolving at the same time. Um, and then, you know, fast forwarding to the 90s, the 2000s and the web era, uh, just a ton of research has been done refining text search and also making it specific in many cases to the kind of content we find today on the World Wide Web, which is not only textual data, but it's surrounding links and numbers and uh, accesses as well. So the field has grown quite a lot in the last 15 to 20 years. Traditionally, database systems and information retrieval or document search systems, as they're sometimes called, were separate products. Document management or document search systems were mostly targeted originally to libraries, to uh, legal firms, uh, and to government, which had lots of electronic documents. Um, this all changed when the web became prevalent and advertising on the web became a source of revenue for big companies. Um, and there still is a small market of what's called enterprise search, which is to uh, service these older uh, use cases. But the vast majority of what's done in text search these days is done for searching the web. So here's our plan of attack for covering just a, a little bit, the tip of the iceberg of information retrieval in the context of this database class. We'll start with the basic Hans Lund era issue of doing naive Boolean search on keywords. And we won't worry about ordering the answers in any way. So just can you find the documents that match my query? After that, we'll get a taste of how to rank the results of queries so that you can get the more relevant documents at the top of the list uh, and the less relevant document at the bottom. We will not have time in the light treatment we'll do in this class to look at some of the things that are less associated with data management and more associated with language and the structure of language. Um, one of the systems issues we won't look at that's pretty important is text-oriented index compression. So how can we make our B trees really tuned very well to text search? We'll skip that topic here. We'll stay at the level of understanding that we have of B trees so far. There are a whole lot of bells and whistles, though, related to text search, specifically around language, that we will not cover in this class. Uh, just to give you a flavor of some of these, you know, basic things like dealing with tense and plurals, a topic often called stemming. Um, identifying synonyms and related words. We won't be able to do that today. Uh, disambiguating multiple meanings of words, so the same word meaning two different things. Clustering of output to make sure that you see outputs that represent different concepts that come back from the search. Uh, and then issues like the semantic content of your query and being able to dialogue back and forth with the search engine um, and iterating your questions. These are all topics that in a full treatment of information retrieval you'd want to cover. Um, today we'll mostly focus on the engineering of the back end of indexing and querying for the basics of search. And the good news is a lot of these topics that we won't cover today are relatively orthogonal to what we will learn. So you can add them to your uh, knowledge base, so to speak, uh, later on uh, on your own. Okay, uh, information retrieval and database systems often seem like very different beasts. And there are certainly people who will tell you that they're completely different and um, you know, should be treated very differently. Uh, so let's look at that. I mean, in information retrieval, the queries have imprecise semantics. When you do a search on the web, it's not quite clear what you're looking for, and it's not quite clear whether the answers are good. And uh, the measure of whether a query is good in information retrieval is something that has to be characterized carefully. By contrast, in database management systems, the queries are very formal. They have a logical semantics. It's quite precise. There is only one correct answer to your query, given a fixed input of a database instance. So those already are very different. In database systems, there's only right and wrong wrong answers, and information retrieval, there's answers of better or worse quality, and it's often relative to the intent of the user. Huge difference right there. Uh, related difference and a much simpler difference is simply the language. The language of information retrieval is keyword search, and anyone can use it. It's really, really easy to get into information retrieval, to use a search engine, and to understand kind of what it's doing. 
By contrast, database management systems are targeted to greater or lesser extent at programmers uh, using a language like SQL, which is a structured query language and expects you to understand a bit of what it means. In information retrieval, the inputs are different as well. It takes unstructured text documents, usually intended for human uh, comprehension, whereas database systems take structured data, usually uh, tables of rows and columns that are not so much intended for human comprehension, at least not on Toto. Um, information retrieval systems are read mostly. The data is updated periodically in batches, but it's not updated uh, interactively. By contrast, database management systems have a long tradition of transactional updates, which we'll learn about later in this class. And then finally, in information retrieval, the result model is that you get an ordered list of results that you can page through, k at a time. And in database management systems, the idea is that the full answer set is what you're looking for, uh, and it should be generated by the system, at least in an iterated fashion. So those are very big differences, and yet, under the hood, these systems are really not as different as they might seem. And it's very sensible, and I hope you'll agree with me by the end of this lecture, to learn a bit about both of them in the same class, because the fundamental engineering pieces underneath a scalable information retrieval system are the same as some of the fundamental pieces underneath a database management system. Now, having said that, you tune to one or the other very differently. And in practice, I'm not aware of a product that does excellent work in both information retrieval and databases. And so the tuning of these things and sort of the details of it do separate the classes of systems. You might say that information retrieval systems are more customized than database systems because they have a very particular role that they play and a very particular kind of query that they answer. And we'll see that as we go through the lecture. Database management systems have a sort of more general purpose uh, query workload that they're targeting. Now remember our picture of a database management system architecture. This has been our reference. And this is more or less a relational database management system architecture, right? Going up from SQL to the bottom. And then on the left, we have transactional semantics for concurrency and recovery, which we'll learn about later in this class. So all of that's very traditionally what's offered by relational database systems. If you look at information retrieval systems, they're similar but different. So at the bottom level of our stack, we have similar things. We have files over which we have disk space management and buffer management. But in most information retrieval systems, the buffer management and disk space management is deferred to the operating system. We're going to trust the operating system and its file system to do the right thing in information retrieval, and it usually will. Above the buffer management layer, instead of having a general purpose uh, access methods layer, we have this thing called the index. And you'll hear people in search talk about indexing, and they mean something very specific that we'll cover today. Above the index, we have this thing that I like to call the query. In some sense, and we'll see what I mean in a few slides, there's only one kind of query that ever gets asked in an information retrieval system. It's a text search query, a keyword search query, and we'll see what that looks like in a bit. However, there's something special on top of that, which is the ranking algorithm, the thing that orders the results by relevance to your query. And that is uh, quite a lot of secret sauce in most of the search engines, but there's some basics there that everybody knows that I can teach you today. And then finally, on the top of this, in addition to uh, being able to do keyword search, there's often some kind of either autocomplete or search modifier box on the top that takes the typing that you do in the search box and augments it in some way. And that's another thing that's special to information retrieval. Finally, on the side, in terms of updates, things are not transactional. They're quite different. There's usually something like a crawler. Think of a web crawler that goes off and fetches the content from all the documents that you want to index. And then typically, that stuff is inserted into the search engine via a bulk loader that bulk loads the index periodically, say, uh, overnight in some rolling way. Okay, so a different update model on the left. No transactions. Instead, we're doing bulk loading all the time. And rather, a different top half of the um, query stack on the right. 